Right, Matt, come on. You ready to roll? Oh, just finishing having a wee. We're rolling. Uh, <laughs> hi, Matt Watson here from Car Wow. Um, I was just having a quick wee. <laughs> in this field because I've come out into the countryside to test this. It's the new Toyota Yaris GR. It's effectively a rally car for the road. It's one of the cars I've been most excited about in my 20 years as a motoring journalist. And today I'm gonna to talk you through all the features and upgrades that this car has. It's insane. And then I'm gonna see what they feel like when you drive it. Do they add up to a car that is awesome on the road? Before we get into all of that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you will not miss a single upload and probably catch me going to the toilet again in future. Now, if you're actually thinking about buying a new car, such as one of these, or maybe another car entirely different, then me and my team can help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted CarWow dealers. And if you want to do that now, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. Alternatively, just later on, Google, help me CarWow, and we'll see what we can do. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design because you might be thinking, wait a minute, Matt, isn't the Toyota Yaris a five-door only? Well, yes, the normal one is, but Toyota's built a three-door version specifically due to homologation rules to go rallying. Now, this is what their rally car looks like. It's not been fully unveiled. It was supposed to be for the 2021 season. The benefit is that we now have this road car that they had to produce, which is just insane. So the roof line is 10 centimeters lower than on the normal Yaris. Reason being that they need it nice and like the back so they can fit a big spoiler on it for the rally car. The only things that are actually carried over from the normal Yaris are the door mirrors and the front and the rear lights, everything else is different it's even got this is insane a carbon fiber roof on a yaris it's nuts i mean that helps reduce the center of gravity albeit by like about that much and it adds to the body stiffness as does the three door body design rather than the five door oh this car's also about five centimeters longer than the normal yaris 18 inch alloy wheels look lovely as well i adore the look of this car it's attracting big bees and loads of flies they love it as well let me know what you think about it in the comments below here at the front, the GR Yaris is just way more aggressive than the normal Yaris. It's got a massive grill and it's the same shape as the radiator, so it aids cooling. Also, this is supposed to provide a little bit of downforce when you're going high speeds. That's what Toyota says anyway. Not sure it's true. You've got your GR badge there and you can think of GR as being Toyota's version of BMW's M or Mercedes AMG. Now, if you look here, you'll see a huge vent. This is real. It actually funnels air there and it comes out through a little hole there to help cool the brakes. This vintage thing here, that's fake though. And I'm not so keen on this weird carbon fibery effect plastic. Shame about that. Otherwise, good front end. Here at the back, you can really notice just how much wider this is than the normal Yaris. It's actually six centimeters wider to be precise, which is quite a lot. That gives you a wider track, distance between the front and rear wheels for improved cornering, but also it allows for flared wheel arches, which helps improve the aero down the side of the car. In fact, the car's got a new roof spoiler and a diffuser. Apparently they both work and provide downforce, according to Toyota. Still not sure I believe them, but I'll tell you what's not fake for sure, the exhaust pipes. Hallelujah for that. Here on the inside, the GR Yaris gets a sports steering wheel with GR badging. Feels nice to hold. You've also got some sports seats, which are a bit more body hugging than in the standard car. And they've got this Alcantara material on them, so it grips you, so you don't go sliding out your seat when you're heeling around the corners. I like the fact that it's got that backrest release rather than a ratchet so you can get it into the ideal position. My only minor complaint is the fact that I wish that this seat would just go a little bit lower. This being a sporty car, I like to go as low as possible. You've also got some sporty aluminium pedals and a leather gear selector with some red stitching. And Toyota has actually raised the gear knob up by five centimeters so your hand doesn't have to travel so far to touch it. Sorry, to operate it. Then you've got another knob here, which I'll talk about a bit later. Then here on the center console, you've got some special buttons. There's one which does your auto blip feature for when you're changing down a gear. And there's one for the stability control, which allows you to turn it off in a Yaris. Then there's this little plaque here, which says developed for the FIA World Rally Championship, just in case you forgot. Then there's the dials, which are a bit different than in the normal Yaris. They're just normal analog dials. And they've got white numbers, red needles. These dials do look a little bit 
too basic for my liking. You've also got a little digital screen between them with some extra GR Sport gauges. So you've got one for your turbo boost, and another for your four wheel drive torque distribution. Some of the features include GR Yaris floor mats. Wow. And a GR start stop button. This car comes with quite a decent amount of standard kit. So you've got dual zone climate control. You've also got a reversing camera, though it's a little bit washed out. There's keyless entry and you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for the infotainment system. So it doesn't really matter that it doesn't get satellite navigation as standard because you're just going to use Google Maps anyway. Let's move on to the more technical aspects of this car, starting with the most important one of all, the engine. So it's underneath this rather snazzy looking engine cover with GR badging and some red accents. The actual engine itself doesn't look anywhere near as interesting. So I'll keep it covered then. So it's a 1.6 litre, three cylinder turbo petrol. And apparently it's the most powerful three cylinder turbo petrol currently on sale because it puts out 261 horsepower and 360 newton metres of torque. Right, I'm going to see how quick this car is from 0 to 60 using my specialist timing gear. So I'm going to launch it. Stability off. Oh, oh that was good. Got a 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. And you're doing 60 when you're changing from second to third, which means that actually the feeling you get from this car is a lot quicker than one that does 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. It really does feel super rapid in gear. One of the key things about the GR Yaris is the fact that it's got four-wheel drive. In fact, Toyota developed a whole new four-wheel drive system, the first one they developed in 20 years, specifically for this car. And it's not like the ones you get in German hot hatches where they're like mainly front-wheel drive and then they send some power to the back wheels when you need it. It's permanent all-wheel drive with a bias of 60% of the power to the front and 40 to the rear. Now, if you'd rather this car was a little bit more rear drive bias, no problem. If you turn this knob to the left, it puts the car into sports mode and then 70% of the power is sent to the back and only 30 to the front. Now, if you turn it to the right, then you go into track mode and then it's a perfect 50-50 power distribution. So if you just want to go back to the normal 40-60, just press it and you get to normal mode again. Toyota has given this car a whole new rear suspension setup. So instead of the normal torsion beam that you get on the standard Yaris, it has independent rear suspension. You get some seriously upgraded brakes on this car. Front discs are 356 millimeters in diameter. That's bigger than on the Supra. They're gripped by four piston calipers. At the back, you've got 297 millimeter discs gripped by two piston calipers. Also, you get Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires as standard. The steering has been tuned precisely for this car to make it more responsive and more precise. Also, it uses an aluminium column to help save weight. You get loads of stiff and sport suspension over a normal Yaris, but if you pay an extra £3,500, you can upgrade to the circuit pack. And then the suspension is tuned further still to make it a tad stiffer, and you also get slightly beefier anti-roll bars at the front and the back. You also get upgraded forged alloy wheels, which save a total of 10 kilograms in weight, plus the brake calipers are then painted red. The big news, though, is that that pack includes a front and a rear Torsen limited slip differential for even better corner exiting traction. Now that brings me on to the price. The GI Yaris starts from just under £30,000, but you're going to want that circuit pack. So you're talking £33,500. Seems like quite a lot for a Yaris. But if you get on finance, put down 25%, try to do 0% finance on it, it comes in at under 300 quid a month, which means that actually it's quite affordable. It's more affordable on finance than quite a lot of other cars because it should hold its value well because only 25,000 will ever be made worldwide. There is one problem though. While I have made this car for homologation purposes, so you go, this is basically a rally car for the road, they may never ever run the rally version of this. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the GR Yaris. Because of that sloping roof line, headspace in the back, look, it's horrible. Plus, it's a strict two-seater here in the rear. The central seat is now just a kind of tray. If you want a high-performance Japanese hatchback that can carry people in the back in comfort, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my in-depth review of the Honda Civic Type R. Also, another problem with this car, being three-door only, to get in and out, you have to do this kind of palaver. Excuse me while I just extract myself from the vehicle. No! No! For such an aggressive looking hot hatch, this car has such a puny sounding comical horn. I mean, just listen to this. 
normal Yaris's boot capacity is 286 litres and we'd have some space underneath here. But because of all the four-wheel drive gubbins, as it's technically known, there's less space in this, 174 litres. So that's quite a bit less than a Ford Fiesta ST. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my video of that car. You're not going to be able to carry much of this, really. For just over £2,000, you can get something called the Convenience Pack. It includes parking sensors, an upgraded JBL stereo, inbuilt satellite navigation for the infotainment system, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, and even a heads up display. Seems like pretty good value. The only problem is that for reasons in the UK and the rest of Europe, you can't have that pack and the circuit pack as well. It's one or the other. Thanks to emissions regulations, this car's exhaust doesn't sound particularly good. Listen. Now, Toyota tries to get around that by pumping exhaust noises through the car's stereo to make it a bit more atmospheric. But I just don't like it when manufacturers do that. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Check this out. Frameless windows like on some expensive sports car. Apparently that's because it helps make the whole body stiffer. Toyota has changed the car's pedals as well as just making them aluminium. The throttle pedal is slightly bigger and it's got a new bushing for improved feel. The brake pedal has this little sidewall to stop your foot slipping underneath it. And the clutch pedal is made heavier, once again, for improved feel. Toyota has used 260 more spot welds and an extra 50 meters worth of adhesive when constructing this car's body compared to the normal Yaris to help make it more rigid. I'm just going to test that now. Ooh. Yeah, it's bolt off. Ow. The GR Yaris's bonnet, doors and tailgate are made out of aluminium instead of steel. Also, the bumper is constructed from a lightweight polymer, which is 38% lighter than a standard bumper. So it is quite flexy, look at that. Still, overall, you save 24 kilograms over the standard Yaris. In fact, this car weighs in at 1,280 kilos, which is not bad for a four-wheel drive hot hatch. Not only does this car have a manual gearbox, in fact, you can't get an automatic, it has a good old fashioned manual handbrake. And when you actually pull it up and engage the brake, it automatically decouples the four wheel drive system. That's right. Toyota are actively encouraging you to do handbrake turns in this car. All right, let's talk about what this little GR Yaris is like to drive. Well, I have to say, this is a truly awesome car. The controls, they have so much feel, the steering, the gear shift, I mean, the gear shift is just a delight. I love changing gear in this car. It's so mechanical feeling. The pedals, they're nicely placed so you can heel and toe, but if you don't want to do that, then you just use that auto blip feature and it'll do it for you. But I want to be involved. I want to heel and toe. This car is all about the driving experience. <laughs> and yet the suspension is firm, but it's not terrible. It's actually quite a well-resolved suspension system. I'm gonna actually switch this dial, the four-wheel drive system, put it into rear drive bias. So it's 70% to the rear. And you do notice it. I didn't think you would, but you can feel that the car's been pushed more through a turn rather than pulled. And I thought that'd be the way I'd drive it. <laughs> but no. The best is track mode. And I know I'm on the road, but I don't care because track mode, this thing just goes rabid. The way it just hooks up and hauls you out of turns, I mean, it really is epic. Really helps that the steering, it's just so sharp and direct. And the brakes, they are so nice. The feel through the pedal is exceptional. This car is all about the feel. It's the kind of thing that you just want to go out and take a drive in of the weekend. And I don't do that much anymore because I just don't have time. But if I had one of these, I would. This engine's crazy. You do have to spin it. It's not punchy dead low down. It really comes on song above 3000 RPM and then it just races to the red line. It doesn't run out of puff. It reminds me of uh, Mitsubishi Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon, which isn't too surprising when you think that Tommy Mackinnon is in charge of the GR Racing WRC team. And you can feel his spirit. You can feel that kind of thing in this car. It's absolutely awesome. Finally, let's see what this car is like to drive on the motorway because you can use it as a daily driver. And I'll tell you what, it's got one feature that you don't get a standard on much more expensive German cars. And I didn't have on my Mercedes A45 AMG, I really missed. And that's automatic cruise control. This has it as standard. So I'm just gonna put it on now, set the speed. 
and I can use the radar control to keep me a safe distance from the car in front. It's also got lane keeping assist. It will actually keep me central in the lane. Can't believe it's got that. My only complaint about this car when driving on the motorway at speed is that you get quite a bit of wind whistle from around the door mirror and a bit of tire noise just echoing through the cabin. Other than that, it's fine. Do you know what? There's been a few cars that have really stood out in my time as a motoring journalist that I absolutely just fell in love with right from the get-go. One was the BMW 1M Coupe. Oh, just amazing car. However, it was a little bit spiky and scary on the limit. Another one was the Toyota GT86. Brilliant, pure sports car. Unfortunately, it's just a bit underpowered. Another one was the Suzuki Jimny. Super cute, affordable, amazing off-road just a bit crap on road, though I still ended up going and buying one of those. And another car that I've instantly fallen in love with is this. It's amazing, I absolutely adore it. And it doesn't seem to have any serious compromises like those other cars I've just mentioned. So I'm really, really worried that I might actually end up buying one. The question is, should I sell my Porsche 996 to fund a Toyota GR Yaris? That's the question. Let me know what you think in the comments. So then, what's my final verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you want a hot hatch as a daily driver, basically to just cruise around in and look posh in, so no, avoid it. However, if you want a pure driver's car that's absolutely brilliant and very unique in this day and age, go right ahead and buy it. In fact, I'm really tempted to go right ahead and buy it myself. I'm not going to end up with another car, am I? I'm really worried I'm going to end up with another car. I've already got too many. Love it though. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. I love you. I do. I've fallen in love with you already. <laughs> I wish I hadn't, but I have. I really shouldn't talk to cars. It's just weird.